just trying to fix this. I didn't mean to turn it on yet. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's another daily gab. This might be a little bit of a short one. There. Stay. So tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. We need to reflect on what is really important to us. We got a lot of people that are aggressive about the whole Black Friday thing. Now, I'm all for being against Black Friday, but you know, who am I to stop other people from going out and losing their minds? Um also, it's no makeup day for me. None. Um, because, you know, every now and then it's good to have a break. It's good to have a break, you know? A lot of women are, you know, they're like, you can't leave the house without makeup. Yes, I can. Just not put makeup on and walk out. Easy as that. I, for one, have simply too much to do today. <laughs> the only calm I'm going to be getting probably is um, moments at the day job and after work. But still, it's hustle, hustle, hustle. So, um, yeah. So... How I've had I had someone send me a really good question and I read it this morning. It was um how do you function in a world that has gone mad? I'm glad somebody asked me that. Because it's not as hard as you think. You have to choose to allow people to affect you. You have to choose. Again, choose, choose. C-H-O-O-S-E. Choose what affects you. You are the master of your own mind, emotions, and spirit. Okay? It's not that hard. The thing is, you have to look at people and not disassociate yourself with them. <laughs> Dare to allow your emotions touch them and see things through their eyes, through their feelings. Feel as if they were your own and have the strength to pull away and not let it affect you. Don't take all their problems as much as some of us would like to. Don't take all the problems. If it's not your own, don't own it. <clears throat> it's all about balance. Like, for instance, I've told uh, a few of my friends that are struggling in retail. I said, do not let a bad moment be a bad day. Do not let a bad day be a bad week. Do not let a bad week be a bad month. Do not a bad, don't, blah, blah, blah. don't let a bad month become a bad year. In the words of David Hopkins, you are what you attract. If you wake up today and you say, I'm going to have a good day. The kid that I usually babysit, I told her that, you know, the morning she got up and she was like all upset because, you know, she was bullied at school and she's just, she's tired of it. She, she doesn't want to be bullied at school. And I said, you know what? You're going to have a good day. Say it. And I want you to believe that you're going to have a good day. Because if you believe it hard enough, it's going to happen. So, she did. She said it three times. She said, I'm going to have a good day. Again. I'm going to have a good day. Again. I'm going to have a good day. Okay. Do you believe it? Yes. Okay. So, she came to me yesterday before she... um you know, how to do what she was supposed to do at the house. And she said, I had a really good day. I'm like, good, so it worked. She said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Plus, the person that bullied me wasn't there. And I'm like, 
Hey. Hey. Maybe that's what it took to it for you to have a good day at least. She's like, yeah, I think so. So she got a break from uh, the bully. Now it's time to teach her to handle bullies, deal with bullies. How to not allow them to affect her so badly. Um... <clears throat> So, a lot of people don't know how to live in a world where people are just disconnected, ungrounded, um, unawoken is a good word, um, still asleep. Now, it's, <clears throat> they kind of, if you think about it, to, like, to people like me, normal people, they appear as zombies. These are the people that you say, hello, how are you? And they say nothing. Or if you smile at them, they do nothing. They're like, um, or the people that you, <clears throat> you know, ask a question they, and, and they just only listen long enough just to sum up a reply. It's like, Hey, would you know? That was rude. And then, uh, what I find it funny is when I ask how they want their stuff bagged. Like if they have one item. Some people don't even want a bag for one item. I said, did you want? No. So I leave it on the counter, give them their receipt, and they're like, where's my bag? I was going to ask you for a bag, and um, you said no. Well, I want a bag. And I'm like, and I want to say so badly, that why don't you let me finish my sentence so you know what I'm asking you? Yeah, how about that? Novelty concept, huh? Let someone finish sentence for a change. Rude. So... It, it takes a lot of patience because a lot of people are walking around here and they have some kind of emotional problem. They're going through something. Basically, like I said earlier in the other videos, is people are bleeding on those that they have that on those that haven't even cut them. It could be a situation that's bothering them, and they take it out on. Nobody knows how to cope. Nobody knows how to save face. Nobody knows how to deal with life, really. N nobody really does. It's just you have to take it all in stride and take it with a grain of salt. It is what it is. You can either change it or adapt to it. That's the best explanation I can give, really. Life. How to life. 411 for life is you take it with a grain of salt or you adapt to it. You deal with it or you adapt. Deal or adapt. Deal or adapt. Healing or changing so it doesn't hurt so much. Life is not easy. And, and we all just, you know, we all need to remind ourselves that we're not out here alone. We're surrounded by people, whether they're awake or not. Someone beside you, near you, around you, at your home, at your job, at your doctor's office, I mean, anywhere, everywhere, they are going through something. And the least we can do as our duty as human beings to one another is to not hinder but help. Don't hurt them. If you can't help them, if you can't help them, don't hurt them, at least. I think the Dalai Lama said that. He said, if you can't help, he said, our, our job in life is to help others. But if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. You know?
I mean, if if you really want to know how society and humanity is is as a whole, drive around on the interstate, drive around in towns and suburbs, and just look with your heart, not with your eyes. Look with your heart, not with your eyes, and you will see and feel so much more. And the best way to coexist with people like this is just be stubbornly positive. That's, that's the, the notion I took, is to be stubbornly positive so that nobody, nowhere can say that I was hateful or jerk to them. And if someone still says that I am, well, a lot of people surrounding my life will know it's a daggum lie. I'm only hateful and mean unless I absolutely have no other option but to be. My record of dealing with someone's bullcrap is... Well... I want to say three years. Three years. And that person still, to this day, says horrible things about me. But... I really don't care because they're not in my life anymore. Do they sometimes rear their ugly head up to let me know that they are still alive? Yeah, they do. In their own ways. Like steal money from my bank account. Finding ways to hack things. Yeah. Good times, good times. At least my feet, at least I'm on my toes. Keeps me on my toes. Hey, I need someone to challenge me. That's how I look at people that bother me, upset me, mess with me. They challenge me. They challenge me. And I take that challenge by the horns and I flip that bugger over and smack it on its belly. Yeah. What now? I don't, I don't do anything terrible. Just, yeah. You grab the bull by the horns, flip it on its back and smack its belly. Go. Pow. Let it know who's boss. Oh, yeah, look what I did. Imagine what else I can do. Behave. <sighs> but, um, <sighs> if you can't help anybody, don't hurt them. And with the holiday seasons coming up, we can all take a part. In attempting to be thankful for what we do have in our lives. Well, I don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You're alive. You love yourself. Or I don't have any family I can go to this season. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. You know? Don't always look at the negatives. I know there's a lot of horrible things we're all going through, but... At least count your blessings. Like, for instance, I'm technically, technically homeless. Ish. It's an odd situation. But, at least I have access to food, a bathroom, a place to sleep. And I have people in my life that love me. And at least I... You know, I have a job. Pretty fun job at that, too. A lot of people think I'm being sarcastic when I say, oh, I love it here. When they're like, oh, poor you, you got to work today. I'm like, no, I love it here. I love my I love my job. And people are so flabbergasted by it, they just laugh. They're like, <laughs> like oh, she's lost it or, oh, she's a delight. I don't know. Whatever. I enjoy my job. I love the people I work with. I love my customers. And I love people. Because not liking them is not going to get me anywhere. It's just going to hurt the fact that I'm trying to be the change that I wish to see in the world. And I want to do that so bad that I'm willing to face Crowds and crowds and crowds of people 
and doing my best to make them happy and helping them. And I also plant little seeds of uh, truth and love in these people too. Like for instance, a customer was uh, saying, you know, how she didn't understand how she can go on any further being out in public. And she's like, I might as well just, you know, but people buy things on the internet mostly because they don't want to deal with people. They can't deal with people. Not saying that I blame them, but they're not helping the situation. Because if you ignore the problem, it gets 10 times worse. But if you face the problem, it isn't so bad if you keep facing it every day, at least a little bit. That goes for anything in life. If you run away from anything and anybody, chances are it's going to get worse. You should try the rice experiment. You should really look it up. The rice experiment about one jar of rice that was uh, had nothing but good things said to it. And um, one, another jar that was fully on ignored. And another jar that was... Um, that was uh, said horrible things to. And... You see how nasty the other ones get. How long it molds. But if you look it up, it, you you would be un, you would be amazed at how much power that we actually do have in our voice and our presence. You'd be surprised, really. Um, and I, I told her. I said, you know. I said, she said, I don't know why people are so mean and hateful, especially in the holiday season. I said, the holiday seasons are hard for a lot of people, whether it be finances or personal things like uh, loved ones or anything. Anything can upset a person. Let's be honest. We're very fragile creatures as well as also we can be very strong creatures. We can defy odds that are pretty much not supposed to be defied. <laughs> <clears throat> and I told her, I said, people are the way they are and they treat others as a reflection of how they are. About The treatment of other people is a reflection of a person's character and also what they're going through. If no one knows how to cope, which is, I want to say, 99% of the population of the planet Earth, um... Chances are, they're going to take it out on everyone and everything, including inanimate objects. Um, people that are hurting tend to bleed on those that didn't cut them. And the woman looked at me and she said, truer words could never have been spoken as eloquently as you did. And I'm like, oh. She said, I'm going to write that down when I get in my car. And I'm like, okay. Well, you have a good day. Happy Thanksgiving. And be safe. And also, a lot of people tell me about loved ones they've lost that around the holiday season. Gentleman lost his wife of 48 years. 48 years he was married to this woman. And out of the blue, he just tells me, he said, if you ever get married, cherish every single second with him. I said, I do. He said, oh, you're married. Yes, I am. Long story short, he told me about how it's hard for him to face family time without her, with his grandkids, his kids. He said, it's painful because I miss her. He said, my heart physically aches. So, I mean, I have people vent to me, talk to me, tell me great, wonderful things, tell me horrible, sad, gut-wrenching things. And you know, when they leave, I tell them, I'll keep you in my thoughts and prayers. And I do. Again, if you can't help nobody, at least don't hurt them. You'd be surprised with what a listening ear can do for somebody. Or just 
work kind words like, oh, I'm so sorry, and actually mean it. Or you'd be surprised how powerful it, a genuine, hi, how are you today? A lot of foreign people that are not from around here, they say, you know what I don't understand is why Americans say, hi, how are you? And they don't really mean it. It's, they use it as a greeting. And I'm like, I mean it. I had a person lose their mind because I actually meant it. And they're like, That's, this, you're so amazing. Please don't don't change. I'm like, I don't plan on it. Well, anyways, be safe, ladies and gentlemen. And I wish, I wish, I wish we all have a really good day today. Be safe. Be courteous and kind to one another. Goodbye.